Coming Apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now, here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Are you serious? Are you serious? What? Welcome to the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Begley, and this is Sunday Night Live. I tell you, tonight, hang on, because we're going to reveal some things that the Illuminati, the shadow government, if you will, the beast kingdom in the Bible, is the plans that they have laid out. Just like God said in the book of Amos, for the Lord said, for I can do nothing except I reveal my secrets to my servants, the prophets. This is Amos 3, 7. That same law is in play for Lucifer. He can do nothing unless he reveals his prophetic plan in advance. 
And we're going to take a look at what that may be, according to one of the greatest scientists of all times, former Nazi scientist who came into America during World War II during Operation Paperclip, who became the face, really, of NASA, and that was Werner von Braun. But what did he warn us of that was so important? I'm going to tell you in just a second. First, put out a shout right now for noblegoldinvestment.com. That's noblegoldinvestment.com. Guys, if you're 401k, if you got all your eggs in one basket, you can, look, you, you need to diversify, okay? Pick up the phone tomorrow morning and call Colin Plume at 877-646-5347. That's 877-646-5347. Let him help you set up a gold IRA. If you do, he'll give you this one-tenth of an ounce gold coin, solid gold coin. It was done at the U.S. Mint. It's a collector's item. One-tenth of an ounce American Eagle solid gold coin. He'll give it to you just for being a blessing to you since you have now diversified your accounts. Tell them Pastor Paul Begley sent you over there. That's noblegoldinvestment.com. All right, now let's go right now to the, we've got a ton of current events to talk about. No doubt about that. Putin, Macron agree to hold a trilateral talks in the next few hours to try to halt the escalation in Ukraine. But I have four conflicting articles from the mainstream, lamestream, fake news media. And that's what I'm saying. There's a propaganda war going on. The military industrial complex or industrial military complex, whichever way you want to say it, military industrial complex, itching for a war, Lucifer itching for a war, and the globalists seemingly as if they're itching for a war, but Russia's, Russia and Ukraine seemingly don't really want to go there, but is the world elite pushing for this? What does this all mean? Well, let's go, first of all, to a prophecy. It's really not a prophecy, but it's, it's a prediction. Actually, it's not even a prediction. It's the plan of the Illuminati and Werner von Braun, who died in 1977, on June 16, 1977, he was only 65 years old. Could you imagine if that guy was, uh, if he had lived another 30 years, what they might have advanced in technology. But let's go there now and take a look at what he, he said. Uh, okay, there. how much did Warner Von Braun know, and when did he know it? Um, there he is, pictured among several German officers. This was 1941, during really the height of the uh, World War II. Now, uh, Here's what we know. Besides the fact he was a rocket scientist, there is this situation uh, that took place there. Oh, okay, wait, it's here. The term Illuminati was recently released in the public's collective consciousness when it was made popular by Dan Brown's best-selling book, Angels and Demons. The Illuminati refers to an elite group of people, both historic and modern, who make up so-called enlightened secret societies. Today, they are imagined as being the controlling group of elite humans who run the world, the elitist. They are the puppet masters behind the oil industry, the banking system, religion, and mainstream media. This tight-knit group of people form a transnational shadow government that operates without oversight from the executive, legislative, or judicial branch. They don't answer to the United Nations, the president, or anyone else for that matter. They run the military industrial complex and have access to unlimited funds under the guise of national security. You can see the Washington Post if you want to read a special they did called the Top Secret America. That was the Washington Post that did that to see just how um, out of control this group has been or has become. Uh, now this group, Supposedly, this group would be world elite, having attempted and succeeded at controlling the population through propaganda and thought control. A few decades ago, the group became seriously concerned with overpopulation and subsequently came up to, with a plan to depopulate the earth. 
the uh, agenda was to be enacted over a course of the next 50 years, beginning in the 1960s. This plan was to roll out different elements of fear-based propaganda, subsequent depopulation. Each effort was designed to unite people under the guise of, of justice or environmental concern in order to justify a war or tax in which the elite would, would profit from. Their plan was to use forms of mainstream media, TV, radio, newspapers, etc., to control people's opinions regarding of certain issues in order their plans were to promote. Again, this is a hypothetical explanation of what is a potential group called the Illuminati. Number one, create the fear of communism. Well, we've seen that already once in the 60s, uh, and during the Cold War, 60s and 70s, and it seems like it's back again. Also, number two, global terrorism. Well, we just came through that for the last 20 years. Number three, global warming or environmental catastrophe. We're in the midst of that right now. And number four, a hoaxed invasion from space. These four points were given to us in a document by Werner von Braun before he died in 1977 to his associate, Dr. Carol Rosen. Now, the first three points may be easy to digest, folks, but the last one might be a little more difficult for the uninitiated. But uh, stay, uh, stay with me for a little bit because the, the background information in order, if you're familiar with the early space race in the U.S., then you'll know the name Warner von Braun. He was a Nazi rocket engineer who picked up the U by the United States during World War II and helped create a country's, our country's successful first flights in space. It was Von Braun revealed in an interview before he died the following information regarding this transnational shadow government and its ultimate goals. When Dr. Von Braun and his colleagues came to America, they brought with them a wealth of information gleaned from other top Nazi scientists like uh, SS General Hans Kammler and Von Braun may have been private to work on anti propulsion vehicles reputedly under development during the last days of the Third Reich. And over the years of his tenure, Von Braun may have also enjoyed access to NASA's secret programs. It certainly does seem this way, as Von Braun apparently began to see the big picture regarding the true goals of America's space program and how the military-industrial complex was manipulating it according to a secret hidden agenda during the latter years of his life. Now, Dr. Carol Rosen first met Dr. Werner von Braun in February of 74. It was at this time, shortly before his death in 77, that von Braun confided to Dr. Rosen the details of the secret space agenda, okay? Inviting her into his office, von Braun stunned Dr. Rosen by describing this very plan that I've read to you point for point, as well as describing in detail how exactly where was all this leading to a planetary control under an oppressive one world government, okay? So, uh, I wanted to share that with you because a lot, there are people who are contesting whether or not this actually ever happened, okay? Whether or not these documents are even true. Some would contest that there's no such thing as a shadow government worldwide. Some would say there is no such thing as global elitist. Others say there's no such thing as a puppet masters. Some say there's no such thing as secret societies. And others would even argue that there's no such thing as, the, uh, as a plan for a one world government. The only problem I have with that is the Bible says that's exactly what's coming. So, okay, just for entertainment purposes only, that's what uh, you like for us to say. Let's just say for entertainment purposes only, this was a uh, somebody documented this and blamed it on Walter von, Werner von Braun. Fine. Then let's go to the Bible. Uh, let's talk about what John saw. I won't talk about whether that is true or not, but I will tell you what I know is true to come. And it's very close to what we just heard. In the book of Revelation, chapter 13, before I get into the current world events, I want to read this. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, I'm sorry, Ezra, I didn't even tell you I was going to do this, so forgive me. 
Uh, I stood up on the sand of the sea. I saw a beast. Oh, you're good, Is. I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horns, ten crowns. Of course, that's the ten kings. And upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. And this beast which I saw was likened to a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth is the mouth of a lion. You can find all three of those kingdoms in the book of Daniel. And now they're consolidated into one. Uh, the dragon gave him his power. That's Lucifer. And his seat and great authority. And I saw one of it. So you see, this is a governmental one world order. And his deadly wound was healed. I saw one of his heads that were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. They worshiped the dragon, that's Lucifer, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, who is like unto the beast and who's able to make war with him. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue for 40 and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given to him over all kindreds, tongues and nations and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In other words, anybody whose name is written in the lamb's book of life will not worship him. And anyone who worships him will never get their name in the lamb's book of life. Hear what I'm telling you as I prophesy this to you now. Listen to what I'm telling you. If you worship this thing, you will never be saved. It's, a, it's an unpardonable sin. It's blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. And if you are saved, you will not sign this thing. Because as a Christian, we don't have a plan B. We got an A plan and it's awesome. A for awesome. Are you serious? So this is in huge, this is huge what I'm trying to tell you. Now, I've, I've re I did, is anybody here? Well, I said, well okay, 13, uh, 1,300 of you are. All right. Now, let me just say something. I'm fired up. If you can't tell I'm fired up right now, I don't know what to do. Fire up! Get real. I got four conflicting articles. This first one says Putin and Macron agree to hold trilateral talks in the next few hours to halt the escalation in Ukraine. It's Putin, Macron, and Zelensky, uh, French President Emmanuel Macron and Russian President Vladimir Putin have agreed to take urgent measures to try to de-escalate the situation in eastern Ukraine. Uh, according to reports today, all phone between two and which Putin also discussed his intention to withdraw Russian troops from Belarus. Putin and Macron agreed to resume work with the, within the Normandy format, which will also include Germany and Ukraine's leadership. And it will begin discussions in the next few hours. As we speak, they're talking. In order to obtain a commitment from all the stakeholders on a ceasefire on the line of contract. Meanwhile, a meeting between French, President, French and Russian ministers of foreign affairs is also occurring in the next several days. That's the follow-up to do the, do the work. Now, the Kremlin has confirmed the statement saying this diplomatic work should make it possible to progress on the basis of the latest exchanges by involving all the stakeholders, the Europeans, the Allies, the Russians, and the Ukrainians, in order to achieve, if the conditions are met, a meeting at the highest level in a define a new order of peace. Did you hear what I'm saying? A new order of peace and security in Europe. Israel, uh, I mean, just the fact that they use this terminology, peace and security, the Bible tells us when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh. It's a dangerous thing, isn't it? The Kremlin has confirmed the statement saying it 
was agreed to continue the contacts at the various levels, but did not elaborate on specific details. So serious concerns have been expressed over the sharp deterioration of the situation on the line of contact in Donbass. The president of Russia noted that the escalation has been caused by the provocations of the Ukrainian security forces, according to the Kremlin. But according to Russian state-owned uh, Russia Today, Putin brought up the ongoing pumping of Ukraine with modern weapons and ammunition by NATO countries, which is pushing Kiev toward a military solution to the so-called Donbass pro pro problem. He's right. The Biden administration, this is honest truth, and, and many of the global elitists are pushing Ukraine to go to war with Russia. I believe the military industrial complex wants a war. Whether the, the Ukrainians certainly don't, and, and I don't think the Russians do either, but they may be pushed into it, although they are camped around their border, there's no denying that. It's part of the strategy and the negotiations. But this is a dangerous high stakes game that's being played. But it is part of Warner Von Braun's four point plan to help create a new world order. When we come back, they even talk about a new order here. They even say it in the statement. We come back, we're gonna talk more about what's going on around the world, including this issue and a whole lot more. We got so much to cover, it's unbelievable. But first, you know what? We're gonna play a song that I'm act I actually recorded on my next uh, music CD called Are You Washed in the Blood of the Lamb? But we sang it today in church under the big tent. So uh, check it out. Are you serious? Do I gotta do that? Oh, that's my bad. Uh, 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 uh. Um, that's, that's because that's my bad. You got it? How did I lose it? Today is Pastor Paul. Oh yeah, that one, okay, yeah. And, and, and here's the question. Are you washed in the blood? Yeah, we, we appreciate this is, uh, t tell me who your friend is here from Nashville. We got a Nashville picker here today. We, we have Steve Hensley right here from Nashville. Yeah, we like that already. And his wife Jordan is back here singing on the green mic. Beautiful, beautiful. I felt the spirit of the Lord really raised when they just got that music flowing, didn't you? <laughs> Praise God. Ah, all right. <laughs> Y'all better just get ready. Come on now. If you've been washed in the blood, if you've been filled with the Holy Ghost promise yeah. of God, something biblical is going on in your life. Come on, let's sing it. Yeah. Savior's side, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, be washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. in the blood of the Lamb. Will your soul be ready for those mansions bright? Oh, be one. 
washed in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, be washed in the blood, in the the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the souls unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless are they white as snow? Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. to worship the Lord under the big tent. But anyway, we had a great time this morning in the worship of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, now let me tell you some of the things that are going on right now in the world because, listen, even though the world is falling apart, we're in the world, but we're not of the world, okay? See, we've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb as we were preaching there. We've been down to life's flowing fountain, had a drink of the living water. We've been filled with the fire of the Holy Ghost of God. And the saints of God are going to go marching into glory because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And we have the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Okay. Now, we just told you that that they're trying to have these... uh, trilateral talks right now, trying to come up with a way to not have a war. But at the same time, another article was released, this one by MSN. Okay, that that last one was Zero Hedge. Now, MSN says this. In Munich, Germany today, they just released that Ukrainian President Zelensky forcefully demanded stronger actions from world leaders as the threat of a full-scale attack by Russia intensifies and increased shelling in the eastern separatist regions of the country. The security uh, architecture of our world is brittle. It's obsolete, he said, according to Zelensky. He said Saturday afternoon during a defiant speech at a security conference in Munich, Germany. He accused governments of egotism arrogance, and appeasement as he urged Western leaders to publicly state their plans for sanctions for Russia, saying that he, after the war begins, it will be too late. Yeah, because he doesn't want war. Now remember, Vice President Kamala Harris was sitting right there. And so he's saying, don't wait to do what you're going to do because then it's too late. Okay. Once the, once the genie's out of the bottle, it's too late. If we're going, what you need to do is announce what you're going to do if he invades in advance. Because maybe that could be used as a deterrent and they not come in. So you can see that's, that was an article that came out uh, Saturday afternoon. But wait, 
There's more because over at the New York Post, they reported Russian commanders reportedly have been given orders to invade Ukraine. Now, which is it? Invade? Or have a trilateral talks and don't invade? How can these two things be happening at the same time? I don't understand. But let me read on. Because the U.S. has intelligence, they said. This is the New York Post. See, it's like there's this war beat going on in the U.S. I'm sorry, guys. I'm an American. But I, I can see what's going on here. There's like they're beating the drums for war. No. No. Why? The reason is what? U.S. intelligence say that Russian commanders have already been received their orders to invade Ukraine. They said that today. The Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said he doesn't believe Vladimir Putin is bluffing. He's been very deliberate in terms of assembling the right kind of combat and combat support capabilities in the border region. And so he has a number of options available to him. And he could. He could attack in the short order, said Austin, uh, to ABC News this week. This is not a bluff, he said. No, I don't believe it's a bluff, the secretary responded, adding that he thinks the Russian president has gathered the forces and equipment you would need to conduct a successful invasion. And on Sunday, CBS News said Russian commanders have received their orders and are making specific plans on how to carry out the invasion. They're saying that the order has already been given. But it, I, yeah, look, how many people you want to see die? New York Post. Why print an article like that? Why even print an article? There's a bloodthirst going on right now among the propagandists in the media. And maybe Warner Von Braun is right. They got to have their war with Russia as the third part of a four-part hostile takeover of the world, leaving us only just an alien invasion. Well, first of all, some meteorites, too. Uh, Russian envoy to U.S. Here's another one. Look at this article. This is by Sputnik News. This is out of Russia. Russian envoy to U.S. says, Donbass is part of Ukraine. Moscow doesn't plan to seize this foreign territory. This is Russian newspaper. Look, I realize that there's some fighting going on right now um, in eastern Ukraine between Russian separatists and Ukrainian forces. We know that's happening. And it could, be, it could be egged on by Moscow to kind of cr continue the negotiation. There's no question that Putin is negotiating. He's negotiating on several fronts. fronts. Number one, militarily, he's got his forces all around Ukraine. He could go in. That's true. That's part of his negotiation. Number two, he's negotiating with world powers to find out where he stands. He's been negotiating for some time. He went to the Olympics to meet with China to find out where he stood with the Chinese. He got their support. They even signed an agreement. He, uh, President Putin and President Xi signed an agreement that got each other's back. He's already built a relationship with the Iranians and he's all with the way in to try to help them fulfill their military uh, quest for nuclear p positioning. But at the same time, he needs to sell oil to the Europe it's what funds his country. And he doesn't want to share that revenue with Ukraine because he believes Ukraine is really his anyway, it, it, that they were part of his. So he's negotiating a bigger piece of the pie of, of the oil. And the NATO countries are pushing back because they don't have to pay it. And Ukraine is pushing back because they don't want to lose what they've already been getting. So this is really what the whole deal is about. The hook is in the jaw in the book of Ezekiel 37. Uh, according to Russian ambassador to the United States, uh, he says that Russia has, Moscow has no plans 
to invade Ukraine. And during an interview with CBS News, he pointed out that the Russia publicly expressed readiness to continue diplomatic efforts to resolve all issues at hand. Russian troops are positioned on Russian sovereign territory. We're not threatening anyone. Although they got a hundred, now they got 170,000 troops there. Uh, it's very, 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 uh, it is very tense. Now, the ambassador insisted that Russia regards Donbass as part of a Ukraine and uh, has no intention to seize this foreign country. We're not trying to seize any territory or any other country. I'd like to confirm that that Donetsk and Luganesk are part of Ukraine. But he said, we've also pointed out that NATO is not a peace-loving group either, and that Russia would like to stop their military blocks expansion. So since December, US President Joe Biden himself has repeatedly accused Russia of planning to invade Ukraine, accusations that Moscow vehemently denies. So Ukrainian intelligence agent involved in car bombing in central Donetsk has been detained. Meanwhile, the situation in Ukraine region of Donbass has taken a turn for the worse as Ukrainian government forces have intensified the shelling of the territory controlled by the self-proclaimed uh, People's Republic of Donetsk which are nothing more than Russian uh, separatists, okay? So as tensions in the region continues to escalate, authorities have launched a mass evacuation of women and children to Russia, while the DPR head Denis Pushin warned that he expects Ukrainian President Zelensky to order an offensive against the self-proclaimed Russian separatist. So, okay, let's be honest. Everybody's got something at stake here. The Russians do, and they are negotiating. They are playing hardball. They're playing world, world-class chess, and the rest of the world's playing checkers. And uh, Harris did nothing more, really, that irritate Zelensky, because that's what came out of that. When she got done talking and saying what she said, he was frustrated and, uh, and said, why don't you people go ahead and say what you're going to do? You keep saying, oh, they'll pay the price. They'll pay the price. Well, tell us what price they're going to pay before they do it. It's too late. Once too late to close the barn once the horses are loose. Okay. And that's exactly what's going on right now. Is this all part of the Warner Von Braun prophecy or prediction? And his prediction was not a prediction. He said, this is the plan. And that plan included four things. And let me just take a look at that again, those four things. And they are this, a fear, number one, fear of communism. And we went through this in the 60s and 70s. Global terrorism. We've been dealing with that for the last 20 years since 9-11. Global warming and environmental catastrophe. We've been dealing with that since Al Gore. And number four, a hoaxed, invasion from space. Interesting that we're uh, in this situation right now, considering all the things that are going on, uh, quite interesting that um, he wrote that in 1974 because he was in on the no. And he was, uh, he was worried about this hoax, sp fake alien invasion as a way to bring the world into succumbing to a one world leader, a new world order. And this is why I keep talking about these things to keep, and this is why we've held these webinars, aliens, angels, and demons. That was one of them. Aliens, AI, and the Antichrist. That was another one. We keep, we keep bringing it forward because we want to prepare people for what is coming upon the world. I wanna welcome all of you that are with us live tonight and, uh, but there's more. Storm Eunice unleashed a fierce winds in Northern Europe, killing at least eight. This is crazy. Gusts toppled trees, sent debris flying, leaving tens of thousands without power and disrupting travel a day later. According to reports out of London, tens of thousands of homes were without power, on Saturday and then on Sunday, a day after the severe storm pummeled parts of Britain and Northern Europe, killing eight people and damaging buildings and causing major travel. They're not used to this. This isn't normal 
for that part of the, of the world. You see, the storms are getting worse. The power of those storms, the raging uh, intensity of it. And the storm named Eunice by Britain's weather service led British authorities to issue a rare weather safety warning for London. Uh, on Saturday, train services were scrambling to accommodate travelers who had been stranded in cities because of the storm. Rain and more winds were expected over the weekend and they got them all day today, even into Monday. Uh, there was fierce gust of winds, trees were toppled, debris, buildings ripped apart, and uh, at least three in Britain and Ireland were killed. Uh, a 30-year-old thir woman died in London when a tree fell on her car. And it goes on and on and on. So yes, this storm Eunice, the storm Eunice, fierce winds, Northern Europe, killing at least eight. Um, but wait, there's more because Jesus said there'd be, there would be signs in the sun, the moon, the stars, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea, the waves would be roaring and men's hearts would fail them for fear, for looking after those things coming up on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Give me one second, I'm going to pull something up. Hang on a second, Is And uh, because I'm gonna show you something else that's going on around the world, and that is the, the earthquake map. Let me just take a look at what's been happening here in the last uh, 24 hours, okay? We've had a 5.2 earthquake, as you can see, has hit Papua New Guinea, you can follow the little blue dot, but really the place, the Philippines, 5.2, but they even had a bigger one right down here, 5.6. 5.6, that was a very strong earthquake in the Philippines. In the last 24 hours, of course, 4.5 Indonesia, 4.9 Tonga, that's that volcano under the sea, 4.7 Indonesia, 4.7 Japan, Puerto Rico got a lot of quakes. Hawaii's also Afghanistan, 4.4, 4.0 Dominican Republic, 4.2 Chile, 4.5 Japan, 4.3 again Afghanistan, 5.3 Perryville, Alaska. A lot of quakes up there in Alaska. 5.1 Peru, 4.5 Indonesia, 4.4 Iraq. What? 4.7 the Philippines, 4.2 Alaska again, 4.6, Costa Rica, 4.6, New Zealand, 4.8, Papua New Guinea, 5.6, as we said earlier, the Philippines, 4.6, the Kuril Islands, 4.3, Colombia, 4.4, the Philippines, 3.5, El Indino, Texas, I said that wrong. 4.7, the Philippines, 4.4, Turkey, 4.8, the Philippines again, 4.5, New Zealand, 5.2, the Philippines, 4.7, Japan, 4.2, Peru, 5.2, Papua New Guinea. That's a lot of mid-range earthquakes taking place around the world in the last 24 hours. So we're going to keep a close eye on all of this. Uh, as things go forward. Also, I want you to know that the solar winds are blowing right now 522 kilometers per second, and that there's now those earth-facing uh, sunspots, a bunch of them, are now facing the earth. There's even just the solar winds alone through the hole on the sun, the different holes in the sun, these sunspots, has brought, already brought on a G1-class uh, solar storm. We already got that going on now, and we haven't even had an eruption. Now, you know, just a few days ago, we had that massive explosion on the backside of the sun, and I interviewed Stan Deo about that. If you didn't see that earlier, I think I interviewed him on Thursday. It was huge, huge situation. And the queen is infected. The queen of England, Queen Elizabeth, at age 95, infected with the uh, virus, needs our prayer. She's doing pretty good. Let's pray for her that she'll be okay, that the Lord will touch her. Um, uh, in this very volatile time, you know, the last thing we need is, uh, is, is uh, something happened to the queen.
because we really think about it. I, I just, I'm just saying, we don't need her to die. We don't need Charles at the king. I just don't think it's a good timing. Uh, also, number six, the bird flu is loose. That's right, bird flu. Highly pathogenic bird flu detected on Long Island of now affecting farmers. They're on high alert. This is not good. It started in Indiana, then it went to Kentucky. It's, I think it's in Ohio and in New York. Highly pathogenic. Bird flu detected. This is what the Bible said would happen in the last days, that there would be these pestilence, these plagues, these diseases taking place. This highly pathogenic bird flu is expanding across the United States as the latest infections were detected in the non-commercial backyard flock in Suffolk County, New York, according to a statement, okay? So it's spreading, spreading to different places. State officials are quarantining the affected premises and birds on the properties will be depopulated to prevent the spread of the disease. Birds from the flock will not enter the food system. No. So our chickens Ducks and turkeys are being affected here in the United States. We already got hyperinflation. We've already got food shortages. We've already got manufactured famines. We've already got barren shelves. We got boats on the water that can't get unloaded. And we got boats that got unloaded that can't get a truck driver to drive it. We've got chaos and confusion and inconsistency among the states and the nation on how to handle this, uh, the current supply chain. And where is Pete Buttigieg in all of it? He is the Secretary of Transportation. That's all I'm asking, where is he? Um, there's no plan. There's not been a plan yet on how this will all be settled and solved. I, uh, I keep thinking about that every day. I keep thinking, surely they're going to uh, bring, bring this guy out with a plan at some point. Oh, speaking of a plan and not enough truck drivers, in Canada, in Ottawa, the Freedom Convoy protest has ended with 170 people arrested, a lot of trucks towed away, and even the uh, county, I mean, excuse me, the uh, Canadian Mounted Police uh, stomping through the crowd and injuring a few people. All of this happened because Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada said, he's not going to even listen. You know what, he never even met, he didn't even let anybody meet with the people who were protesting. You'd at least sat down with them and said, okay, so what is it, maybe we can work something out, like extend the deadline, you know, and maybe this, as we can see the cases are going down. Maybe if we just extend that deadline a little bit, it's all gonna work itself out and we won't even have to do this, okay? I mean, really, this could have been solved easily. And I called on the uh, Trudeau. I called on the prime minister. Please be a leader here, show, show that you could. But they never even let the, those folks sit down at the table with them. That isn't good. You won't listen to the people at all when the 65% of the polls in Canada are screaming. Um, guys, but then again, there's a plan. I just read it to you. Or at least that's Werner Von Braun's version of the plan. I've got books in my library of other versions that are very similar, written 100 years ago on the global plan, the Trilateral Commission, okay? Uh, the, the United Nations Charter, uh, the European Union started out with the Euro to prove that they could create a one world currency. The test is going on everywhere in, in every little direction. There's somebody testing it. Just saying. I don't know. It's for entertainment only, entertainment purposes only. I'm just saying. The Bible, though, is not entertainment. It's pure truth. And we take a look at that as we were reading earlier in the 13th chapter of 1 
of Revelation, we can see what the scripture says about these things that are happening. Now, riot police did use force to clear the main uh, protest center in downtown Ottawa Saturday. We saw pictures and we saw video of it using batons and pepper spray and stun grenades and making dozens of arrests to remove a holdout group of demonstrators occupying the Canadian capital. In a day-long show of force, hundreds of officers pushed their way into the city, facing determined protesters, and uh, they advanced using Canadian Mounted Police um, and other tactics. 170 people were arrested, trucks were towed away, structures and tents the demonstrators were using tore down. And... Uh, by force, Trudeau ended their protest. They won't forget it. The Canadian people won't forget that. Um, wow. It's, it's getting very, very dangerous. Now, when I come back, we have to talk about next the Middle East. Because while, just like the dream I had two months ago, where all of this conflict, the whole world was fake as faced focus, excuse me, on Russia and Ukraine, the bigger problem would jump up in the Middle East. We're going to do, uh, if you could, Israel, do Jerusalem's cry. If we could, here's what we're going to do. When we come back from this song, we're going to tell you what has just jumped up in the Middle East. We're in the last days. I'll be right back. Can you hear Jerusalem's cry? Can you 
That's so true, so true. God has answered Jerusalem's cry, and he will, and he is. I can, I can guarantee you that. Well, Jerusalem's crying again, and this time it's Prime Minister Naftali Bennett. Uh, he says, Iran deal will mean a more violent Middle East. Now, as, as everybody's watching Russia and Ukraine, just like the dream I had two months ago. The real problem, the real, real problem will happen in the Middle East. Not that there might not be war also in Europe. I think so. There could be some sort of a conflict. We already have some pushing and shoving, of course, and, and shelling and uh, fighting going on a little bit over in the eastern Ukraine. But hopefully, this can be resolved. But in the dream, it became very evident. Russia, uh, in the dream, Russia showed their hand to the world of what type of weaponry they had, and it brought tremendous dread upon the uh, NATO forces, and I've seen it in this dream. Uh, but as this commotion was getting started over there, a larger problem jumped up, and that was what was getting ready to take place in the Middle East. Now, what does this mean? Bennett says that an Iranian deal will mean a more violent Middle East. He's saying they're about ready to give Iran a new nuclear deal, which is nothing more, nothing more than a free pass to nuclear capability. And of course, Iran is really locked in now with the Russians and the Chinese. Let me read on here a little bit and tell you what's saying. Speaking to a U.S. Jewish leaders, as progress is made in Vienna talks, Prime Minister Naftali Bennett pledges that Israel is up to the growing challenge. Prime Minister Naftali Bennett warned today that the emerging Iranian deal will likely create a more violent, more volatile Middle East. Bennett stressed that it is Israelis 
and those who live in the Middle East who will bear the brunt of the consequences of this deal under discussion in Vienna, but added that there is no point in playing the blame game. The Prime Minister's remarks came as Western officials indicate that a deal is possible within days. And that, I'll tell you what, who he was talking to. He's talking to the United States of America, specifically the Biden administration, because he knows that the U.S. has blessed this deal. Quietly, behind everybody's back in a smoky cigar room, while the world is watching Russia and Ukraine, a deal is being struck in Vienna that gives the green light to the Iranians. And now I can say that I'm an American. He can't say that because it's America that has to help fund Israel. But I'll say it for him. This is partly what the beast's kingdom is about. Puppet masters manipulating with shadow governments a world on edge to create a global world order. Or I'll just say it this way, if, uh, if, if you think that that's just for entertainment purposes only, maybe. The Bible says it. There's a beast coming, an antichrist coming. It's in the Bible. And this Bible's still relevant because it's not, it'll never be not relevant, by the way, for those of you who mock and scoff at it. It is the infallible word of God. It is the truth when everything else is lying. The Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. I would like to preach right now and uh, just say that we're seeing so much pro propaganda lies and manipulation of this reptilian nation of the, of the Luciferians who are trying to destroy the world. Well, the prime minister's remarks came as Western officials indicate that a deal is possible within days. The biggest problem with the deal, Bennett argued, is the so-called sunset clause. In two and a half years, which is right around the corner, Bennett said Iran will be able to develop, install, and operate advanced centrifuges. They've already got them spinning over there like a top. Enriching uranium. It'd take them two and a half years to get it all enriched in time so they can launch them. They're building the rockets. They're enriching the uranium. And, the, and they're all, it's a two and a half year deal. It's a joke. It's a joke. It's an absolute joke uh, to think that this is uh, somehow supposed to be uh, you know, transparent. My God. Anyway, speaking in Jerusalem, to a conference of presidents of major American Jewish organizations. He also laminated, lamented, cried the fact that the deal would give Iran access to billions of dollars when the regime is on the ropes. Right now, they are very weak, he said. The, the rile has depreciated. They are at their weakest spot in history. And we're going to pour tens of billions of dollars back into this apparatus of terror? Yeah. It's exactly what the puppet masters are going to do. It's exactly what they plan on doing. Exactly what they are doing. One thing I like about Naftali Bennett, man, he, does, he doesn't care to call it the way it is. He just, he just flat don't care. And he's a hawk, man. He's even more hawkish than... Uh, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, to be quite honest with you. Well, and he's got to be, because the nation of Israel has got through the valley of dry bones. It's no longer a valley of dry bones. It's the whole house of Israel that has been reestablished under the word of God. It, it has now been established. And the next move will be Gog and Magog to attack God's people. Boy, I wish I had that prophecy. Do you have it? This is from my 
video that's coming out, I mean, my, uh, my new music CD, it's a middle of a long, the name of the song is Rattle, and then right in the middle of the song, God gave us a prophecy, and it's different than the original version of the song, because Israel, Israel Hall, the Lord spoke to him and said, have Pastor Begley prophesy the original prophecy, which is found in the book of Ezekiel. Here we go. We'll play this for you. I'll be right back. That's the bones rattling. That's the bones rattling. Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, thus saith the Lord God, behold, my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord and I will put my spirit in you and I will place you in your own land and you That's just a little bit of the song, okay? You'll have to, get, we'll get it done. When we bring it out, the, this is gonna be a powerful music CD, and uh, that prophecy happens in the middle of a song called Rattle. So you'll be uh, hearing all about that. Anyway, that is the prophecy of the Bible, and that's exactly what Bennett knows this. He knows this. That's why when you're over there, and I wish I should have been there at this meeting. I really should have been. Jewish and Christian leaders, I should have been there. Uh, I heard they just now getting ready to open up Israel for where we can travel again. It's been two years. I, I, the last time I was there, I, was, I met for breakfast with Dr. Irvin Baxter, and he told me that they're getting ready to build the third temple. He said, they're going to they're move this peace agreement fast. Paul, get ready. You're going to have to help bring in the end time harvest. Well, it's been two years since I was there, almost two and a half, and uh, the doors are starting to open again. Get ready, get ready for the end time harvest. Now, now, while we're talking about all this, hang on everybody, hold on a minute. The EU has now revealed a new world order fears. This article just came out today. So with everything going on with Russia, Ukraine, Israel, Iran, and the Iranian deal, the Western, where's the America? America floating around in the back room everywhere else. It's the EU that's now revealing that there's a new world order fear. But listen to this. Here's what they're gonna blame. Russia and China are the two revisionist powers attempting to change the current world order, according to the European Union's High Representative for Foreign Affairs, and has claimed that three weeks after Moscow and Beijing made a joint statement denouncing many aspects of Washington's foreign policy, calling for an end to the interference in international affairs of sovereign states. Speaking at Munich Security Conference yesterday, Joseph Borrell warned the current liberal multilateral world order is at stake because the friendship between the authoritarian Russian Chinese governments are defying the norms of the existing global architecture. 30 years after the end of the Cold War, we are facing a determined effort to redefine multilateral order. The EU foreign policy chief said, this statement is the culmination of a long-standing campaign. It's an act of defiance. It's a revolutionist manifesto. The manifesto is to review the world order. Now on February 4th, after a three-hour meeting in Beijing, President 
Russian President Vladimir Putin and his Chinese counterpart, President Xi Jinping of China, signed a joint statement in which the two leaders expressed agreement on multiple issues of global sustainable development and international relations. And that did happen. That was signed. You got something, Izzy? So you mean to tell me that the EU and the UN are trying to redefine the New World Order and say that Russia and China are the New World Order, yes. and that's why people are really afraid of the New World Order, because they're not the New World Order. No. <laughs> they're the Old World Order, and they're fighting the New World Order. That's what they're trying to say. They're trying to say that it's Russia and China that are the New World Order, and that they are the Old World Order, and that they are the good guys, and they're trying to say that those two are the bad guys. Do they think if they, they think that if they can hijack the narrative that we'll all just get stupid and go away? 90% uh, of the Americans will. Oh. Yes. D to answer your question, yes. I, I know it is. I, I, can feel your, I can feel your pain. Because, folks, people believe the American propaganda machine to the point that uh, the, we, as biblical preachers and teachers of the word, have to keep showing people that Belzebub can't cast out Belzebub. This bunch is all in it together. Yet this side is blaming that side, and that side is blaming this side, and each is saying they're the white hats, and that the others are the ones of the New World Order, when the truth is the whole ball of wax is anti-Christ for the majority of it, okay? And that's why you need the Word of God. This is why we need it. Belzebub can't cast out Belzebub, and that's what they were trying to do, is right there. And among the other things, Putin and Xi agree to oppose the abuse of democratic values and interference in the international affairs of sovereign states under the pretext of protecting democracy and human rights and any attempts to incite divisions and confrontation of the world. In other words, nobody's got clean hands. They all got dirty hands. China, you certainly have to say that with your ooglers, two million ooglers in a prison camps. But then again... How many people get assassinated around the world for different reasons by, by almost every major government? How many times when the people ask for a question, they get their hands slapped? China, Canada, America. You see, you aren't dealing with individual ideologies to pick and choose which one you think's the best, but you're dealing with a beast. And that beast is led by Lucifer himself. And he's cunning, and he's crafty, and he's deceptive, and he's a liar, and he hates the church. And Jesus said, Simon, who do men say that I am? And they said, some says thou art Elias, or Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Who do you say I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, Simon bar Jonah, flesh and blood has not revealed that to you, but that was revealed to you by my Father. It's up in heaven. And upon this rock, upon this revelation, I build my church, and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. So, folks, I'm here to tell you right now that the only kingdom, go with me to Daniel if you don't believe it. Izzy, if you can go there, that'd be great. We're going to go over to Daniel for a moment. And, uh... And here's what it says in the book of Daniel. I think it's verse, it's chapter seven. Chapter seven. Uh, it's talking about all these, these kingdoms and these, these big beast kingdoms all join into one kingdom. Okay, you can read that in Revelation 13. I read it earlier, but now let's read what it says in Daniel seven about the Lord's kingdom. And the Bible says in verse Nine, and I beheld, this is Daniel 7, verse 9. Daniel 7, 9, are you serious? And I beheld till the thrones were cast down. The thrones of the other kingdoms, the world kingdoms. And the Ancient of Days did sit, God himself, whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool. 
His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire and a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were opened. And I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. And as concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away. Yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. And I saw in the night visions and behold, one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven. He came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion. Christ received dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that shall not be destroyed. Guys, Babylonian empire fell, the Peruvians fell, the Mayans fell, the Incans fell, the Aztecs fell, the Pharaohs fell, the Ottoman Empire fell, the Persian Empire fell, the British Empire won't make it either. Only one kingdom will reign forever and ever. And that's because the Ancient of Days has anointed his only begotten son, Yeshua. Jesus of Nazareth, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. I'm tired of the devil running his mouth. It's time that he understands that we're serving a God that's alive and the God I serve is getting ready and is in the middle of sending one of the greatest moves of God globally that's ever happened. That's why we're doing a global revival. I need your help in this. Look, look, this coming uh, March 1st is our 12th anniversary online. I'm going to beg you to consider to give your very best offering this coming March 1st for a mighty, mighty, mighty move of God to help win the harvest of the last days. Invest in the kingdom, the salvation station, the, this online church, but mostly you're investing in the gospel. That's really what you're doing, the gospel of Jesus Christ. But if you're here today watching right now and you're saying, man, I don't know what's going to happen. The world is on end. You're right. The world's on edge. Oh, it's going to get worse. The lies, the deception, deceiving, the corruption the murder, the madness, the meanness, the maliciousness. It's going to get worse. But Jesus has come to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. And he's come to give his bride peace. We're going to get a song right now. I believe it's time to pray. I really do. It's time for somebody to give their life to Jesus Christ. If you'll just type, I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I'll, I can see right here in the chat room. I will write your name down. I will pray with you personally right here on the air live or on the archives. If you do it right now, right now, do it right now. It's time to be set free for the chains to break. And if you're going to stand with me in harvest on March 1st, type in there the word harvest. Pastor Begley, I'm going to stand with you in the harvest. Do it right now, folks. Let's get saved. Let's get saved. Type, I want to be saved. We are your creation. Give me a little more volume, Israel. Hear us in our prayer, standing in awe. Donica wants to be saved. Alan standing in the harvest. Brianna wants to be saved. God searchable wants to be saved. Praise God. Susan in the harvest. People are rededicating. Bev, rededicating and getting involved in the harvest. Harvest. And 
Maisha M wants to be saved. Brianna Kramer wants to be saved. And many are joining Karen in the harvest, Kim Taylor, Bev, Darren, Diane. Brian wants to be saved. Alenia. Kevin wants to be saved. Jeremy wants to be saved. Troy wants to be saved. Others are joining the harvest. They're coming. They're coming. Rosanna, Annie, Willow, Hashia, Russell, all being involved, all committing to the harvest. Folks, it's going to be the strongest move. 12 years, 12 years of sowing seed, 12 years of preaching the truth. 12 years of standing up against the devil, all of us, one body of believers. Yes, Kevin wants to be saved. There's others. Broken wing is in the harvest. Wendy's in the harvest. David's in the harvest. Sean Farmer's in the harvest. Michael Ross wants to be saved. Praise God. There's others that want to be saved tonight. Get your name written. Get your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You can do it. Leanne Henley in the harvest. Yanel in the harvest. Stealth Drone in the harvest. Linda's rededicating and getting into the harvest. Oh, come on, I feel it now. I feel it now. Karen Pierce says, I stand with you in the harvest. I feel it now. God just spoke that into my spirit. Right at the altar call. Right as I got ready to give it. There's some more people that need to be saved. There's 10 people right now, but I know there's more. Carol's going to get in the harvest. Ron Cooper's getting in the harvest. Rebel Cowboy's in the harvest. Billy Wally, Karen Reed, all in the harvest. There's more people that need to get saved tonight. More people need to type, I want to be saved. You can't be in the harvest until you get born into this kingdom. This is the kingdom that will never fail. This kingdom will never fall. This, the gates of hell cannot prevail against this kingdom. This is the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Cole wants to be saved. RM feels it tonight. Sam is in the harvest. BF's in the harvest. Cole wants to be saved. Wow! Awaken your creation. Farmer pledges $100 on March 1st for the harvest. Blazon is getting in the harvest. Margaret Burns will be in the harvest. Mama Bear is going to be in the harvest. Jennifer Edwards is in the harvest. Praise God. This is your moment to be saved. Yes, Yeshua is coming. Believe me, he's coming. You know that song, Israel, uh, Chosen, uh, You're Chosen, or, um, yeah, you know which one I'm talking about. Tashina wants to be saved, praise God. Cindy Bell's rededicating. There's 12 people that want to be saved, but I guarantee you there's another 10 or 12 that are set on the edge of their seat right now that need to type, I want to be saved. Do it now. Do it right now. world to life where was I Lord, Lord Almighty Almighty with all my failure Ramon is rededicating Tashina is rededicating
Pastor Paul be in Florida next Sunday? Yes, I will. I'm not preaching, but I'll be here. So come on, Karen, come on. You are holy. I'm preaching the following Sunday. But I'll be here, so come on, it's getting awesome down here. Are you serious? The cross you from the water of life. Get a drink. <laughs> Still you chose me. Michelle wants to be saved. Praise God. Somebody sing along. El Shaddai. Lion and Lamb, King of Kings, El Shaddai, Lion and Lamb, King of Kings, El Shaddai, Lion and Lamb, King of Kings. Oh, you can feel the Spirit of God here. Dolores is rededicating. I deserve the Ivy's love. rededicating. You gave me grace. Regina and Cindy are rededicating. For all that you are, I am amazed. The still Yes, what a powerful song that is. Folks, right now we got 13 people we know wants to be saved. I believe there's others, plus I think some of you that are watching on the archives also want to be saved. I want to pray, and a lot of folks are rededicating. Let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just, right now, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, in advance for your tender mercy and your grace as you bring your sweet jewels into heaven. Lord, we're all sinners. We know it. We've all sinned and come short of your glory. There's not a one righteous among us. But Father, we repent of our sins tonight. We confess our sins to you. We're honest with you, God, and we ask for forgiveness, that you would forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, to wash us in the precious blood of the Lamb, to birth in us a new spirit, a clean heart, and a right spirit, Lord, and to save us from the clutches of, 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 of the devil and the darkness of, that he brings, and to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. Lord, because we believe, I believe, we believe, we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We believe Yeshua died on the cross for the sins of the world. We believe that Jesus rose from the dead and ascended into heaven. And we believe he's coming back soon and very soon, and we want to be ready. So right here, right now, by faith, in God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I am saved, 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 healed, delivered, set free, born again, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus, precious name. Are you serious? Welcome to the family. Jeff Andrews getting saved. More people are still joining the harvest. Give us a song, Izzy. Wow.
Lift our praises to the King of Nations, Author of creation. Hear our cry. Bring your Spirit down upon us like a cloud, and breathe in us your. Israel Hall is singing this song. Matter of fact, he wrote it. From the place of our birth to the ends of the earth, our song will never cease. Though we may face our death, your son saying, I'm in the harvest with you, Pastor. Thank you so much. We're going to get it done. We're going to get it done together, church. This is why we're all part of this amazing online church, to get it done. Also, Alex got saved. That's 15. Bring your spirit down upon us like a cloud and breathe in us your life. Philip Anderson, I see you. And Jennifer getting saved also. Sitting there with Alex. Praise God. Do you feel the anointing? It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. That's uh, Israel Hall wrote that song. That was Israel singing. As a matter of fact, formerly Jacob is his group. And uh, man, they're really good. And they're, we have their albums available at our website. If you go to paulbigleyprophecy.com, you can get their album. We have them available. Uh, I tell you, and uh, Izzy is actually producing. Uh, he and Joseph Shackelford are producing my uh, new album that's coming out. And Israel is also producing Kevin Wilson's new album that's coming out. Plus, he's still, he, he helps other people. I mean, you have to understand, this guy never stops. All right? Praise God. Amen. Guys, 16 salvations. 16 salvations tonight. A lot of folks are saying, Pastor, we're joining you in the harvest. Coming, as we're lifting our, we do this every year for our, our anniversary. That when we went online on March the 1st, 2010, God said, go. Go online and preach to the camera and tell the people out there that I'm coming back. We had no idea what we were doing. We had no subscribers. We didn't know what we were doing. Yes, Izzy? I met you the day of your 10th anniversary. You did. The you day. Did, you did on the very day. And you had already been uh, following me. You were part of the online church six years before that. But we met for the first time on the 10th anniversary. 
So these last two years we've been working together. It's been amazing. Uh, praise God. So don't tell me that anniversaries don't mean something. And this is the 12th one. I think this is very, very important that the harvest, the harvest comes in. Now, as you give, you can go to our website at paulbegleyprophecy.com. That's www.paulbegleyprophecy.com, okay? And give, and there's many different ways, and I'll just let the girls put that in the chat room for you so you can see. But go to my website at paulbegleyprophecy.com. Now, if you need a Bible, I want to encourage you to, uh, you know, you can, we'll send you one for free. Just send an email to zd one at hotmail.com. That's www. No, no, no. I mean, zd zero one at hotmail.com. Send an email to her. Tell her she, you want a Bible. We'll send it to you. If you're sick and need an anointed prayer cloth that we anoint that got healing scriptures, we'll send it to you for healing. We'll do that for free. If you want the little book written by Dr. Happy Caldwell called God Loves You, I'll send that to you for free. Blankets, healing blankets for those that are very, very ill, we send out for those that really need a miracle. And we do that for free as well, and chemo caps as well. All of this because of our faithful partners of Paul Begley Prophecy Ministries, this amazing online church. A matter of fact, our television show is going to be airing tonight. It's already aired on Channel 45 in Orlando, Florida. That reaches 3 million homes. But tonight, of course, it airs across the country on World Harvest Television, Channel uh, also in Annapolis Television, South Bend, uh, and uh, Honolulu later tonight. And uh, yeah, it's going to reach a lot of people. We're, we'll be in, uh, before it's all said and done this week, 45 million homes uh, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me just say quickly to you, thank you for being partners with us. Thank you, thank you. We couldn't do it. We couldn't do what we do online and do this every day and evangelizing without this online church. Amen. If you want to be part of a new believers class tomorrow night at eight o'clock, right there's the, there's your Zoom invite. It's free, and Beautiful Story has it right there in the chat room for you. Just click on that, get that get that link right now, and use that, and join tomorrow uh, at eight p.m. Eastern for that new believers class. Amen, and amen. All right, now there's a lot going on. It's going to be a very busy week. <laughs> it seems like every week's a busy week. Uh, but praise God for it because we got so much to get done, so many people to get to Jesus. We ain't got time to mess around. So pray for us. We'll be back tomorrow with you with a lot of updates and what's going on. It's getting very volatile out there, as you can see tonight. You're in the midst of an end time move now. You're in the middle of prophecy. So don't, don't ever doubt it. Jesus is coming very soon, so stay ready. Stay ready. You don't want to be left behind. God bless all of you. Is there anything else I'm forgetting, Israel? Because my mind just kind of went blank and just kind of, you know, I can't remember if I was supposed to say something else or not. So uh, if not, then. Oh, yeah, get your tickets for climate crisis. I forgot about that. Climate crisis tickets. And buy your ringtones. Yeah, my ringtones are available, too, at the website. Thank you. Yeah, get those. They're a lot of fun, okay? Get those. They're a lot of fun. Download them at our website at paulbegleyprophecy.com. And get Climate Crisis tickets. Guys, the webinar is March 11th and 12th. It's just a few days away. It's an incredible lineup uh, uh, that it's going to be amazing. So get your tickets now. Steve Quayle, Mike from around the world. Uh, Gil Brazard, Mr. MBB333, um, some other really good people, that, Marshall Masters, um, myself, Bart Begley has a film, I might have missed somebody in that, it's uh, $49 is all the ticket is, please get yours now, get yours right now, get out ahead of everybody else so that you'll be first in line. We'll be sending those emails out. It's, no, it's March 11th and 12th uh, for climate crisis. It's going to be awesome. You're supposed to say, I love you, Heidi. I'm supposed to say, I love you, Heidi? Okay, did you just get a text that says? <laughs> well, it's no problem for me to say, I love you, Heidi. Thank you so much for that. Amen. Thank you, Heidi. Guys, yeah, get some silver. That's true. Get the silver. Don't forget. Let's get out ahead of it all. And we love Heidi, of course. She's doing wonderful. Amen. And with that, 
I'm gonna let you guys go because I got a long way to go and a short time to get there. So let me say, let old bandit run. Okay, see you guys. <laughs>